Okay, we are now broadcasting to the public, I believe. Uh, I believe we are. Welcome to Marketing Mayhem, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, here we are again. Uh, I'm just um, going to type into my YouTube thingy. We do need to just have that extra YouTube, so give me one second while I do that. Uh, lost my little thing there. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to go over to YouTube and uh, just find the comments. That's what I'm looking for, guys. That's where that's where we are. I'm heading over to YouTube right now because I want to see the comments. Um, and there we go. Okay. So is anybody with us? Are you with us? Are you here? Please comment. Please go over to YouTube and uh, place the comment in the underneath the video and let us know that you're around and that you're here and that you're watching. It's a little bit blowy where I am this morning. Um, Hello, Echo. Here, Echo, we, here Echo. we go. <laughs> here we go. Julie says, how much longer is the mayhem going for? It's only just started, Julie. <laughs> it's going to go on for the next hour. Mayhem for the next hour. Um, so that's good. Um, Neil, could you just do me a favour and just post in Skype or on the comments the long link of the YouTube? We're just testing out a new app in today's Google Hangout, guys. We're testing out something called Google uh, Comment Tracker, so that I could actually see I can actually see the comments in Google Plus rather than actually having um, YouTube open as well. But I've I've kind of done it now so that I've got all the comments in front of me, and I think it's about to start throwing it down with rain where I am. <laughs> hey, that'd be fun. <laughs> Which could be interesting. <laughs> Um, and I just need that long link. So if, if uh, somebody could give me that long link, Neil or Jay, because I can't see it now. Okay. In just Skype. To, here we go. Here we go. Neil's giving it to me in Skype. Yeah. So let's just uh, punch that in over here and uh, see if we can get this comment tracker to work. And then I can see all your comments within the actual Hangout. And then I don't need to keep popping over to YouTube. Okay, let's see if that works. All right, so guys, um, welcome, welcome to Marketing Mayhem. Lovely to see you. Episode four, I think we're on now, aren't we, Jared? Yeah, doesn't feel yeah. like. I guess that first week was kind of just a test week, but yeah. Yeah, That's, episode we're four. Like, we're like pros now, right? We are, yeah, absolute pros at this game. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. It's all, it's all good. Um, and I would just like to uh, pay particular uh, mention, make particular mention, um, oh, I've lost my lower third thing. I'd like to make uh, particular attention to Jared's nose, ladies and gentlemen. I think we should have a round of applause uh, for the fact that Jared managed to cut his nose shaving. And I wouldn't even ask how he managed to get the razor up on his nose, why he even had the razor close to his nose. Do you shave your nose hair, Jared? Is that I, what it that's is? That's actually, I was, <laughs> I was, I was telling my mom. My mom came over for dinner and she asked, what happened to your nose? I said, oh, you wouldn't believe it. I cut my nose shaving and she looked so concerned. How long have you been shaving your nose? <laughs> what happens is when you're shaving one side of your head and you decide to go across to the other side really quickly, the blade catches sometimes. <laughs> Not a pleasant experience. Thank, no. thank so much for pointing that out. I appreciate that. <laughs> oh dear, very funny. Okay, joy and mayhem, hence called marketing mayhem. <laughs> um, so today we are actually talking about um, the critical tools, the the absolute tools that you really do need to have for your um, online marketing business. Okay, um, so. Yes, yeah, sorry, I'm just looking. The lower third app vanishes if you have the comments app running. It has vanished, so it's fine. Um, yeah, so we're looking at the critical tools that you need um, to run an online business, to get an online business off the ground. Um, and while we're going through those tools, what we're going to kind of do is, is is almost do it in a, in a bit of an order, yeah? So that um, uh, you kind of know what you need to do in, in what order. So at this point, I'm going to just hand over to Jared um, because he's kind of got the list of, of things in, in a particular order. And then what we'll do is as we go through, we'll just, uh, we'll just discuss each point and talk about some of the best things um, that you can use. 
Um, and just so you know, anything we recommend to you today, uh, we are not uh, affiliated with. So we don't have any um, affiliation or any uh, financial um, reason to recommend the tools. They're simply recommendations based on our experience and th things that we use. Okay? But should you find any of the advice we give really helpful and would like to donate via PayPal in $100 increments, we'll give you our addresses. And we'll be happy to accommodate you. <laughs> no, we're not doing affiliate offers or anything like that. Just uh, there's a lot of mis, mis, uh, well, not misinformation, but there's a lot of hype out there. As everybody knows, you always hear, you've got to have this tool to be able to make it online or this tool is the tool that you push the button and tomorrow you're going to be rich and all this stuff. So many people get stuck in information overload as we, we've spoken about before on, on past episodes and a lot of the times it's technical stuff to do with learning the different tools and the different resources that you have to have and so we thought it'd be good to go through what you have to have. You can run an effective, successful internet marketing online business with just these tools. And we'll make a couple of suggestions as far as even a couple of unnecessary ones maybe, but that are really, really helpful uh, to make it even easier for you so that you don't ever get stuck in that that overwhelmed feeling when it comes to the technical stuff. So, so yeah. Um, I keep so showing up because it's windy. So the wind keeps going across my microphone, and as it does, it brings me up on on the hangout. Oh, Sorry about gotcha. that. Well, when you when you grabbed your microphone there, it sounded like a motorcycle on my end, so that was kind of cool. I thought <laughs> Joe Barnes broadcasting live from her Harley. Okay, so we have uh, tool number one. The very first thing you're going to need if you're going to have an online business and you want to be taken seriously, you need to have a domain name. You got to get a domain name. Some of this stuff you guys is going to sound real basic to you and you may be surprised at the end how few things you really need to have to run a successful online business but you've got to have a domain name and there are lots of different places you can register a domain name I personally use Namecheap uh, lots of people use GoDaddy you use another one Joe what's yours I use 123-reg.co.uk. Um, oh, okay. it's, it's an English-based uh, domain registrar, and it's something I used a long time ago, way before I ever got into internet marketing. It was something I used in my offline business. Um, and, uh, of course, back in, back in those days, um, I wasn't in any way, shape, or form global, so I never even looked at, you know dot com addresses I just looked at what was available in the UK and um, you know they've always done me good. well I've had no problems with them so I've, I've just never swapped really and the prices they're pretty much in line with Namecheap when I had a look the other day um, for the marketing mayhem stuff that we were talking about it, it was you know pretty similar when you, when you log into your control panel there um, do you basically have one account you log in and then you can manage all of your domains in there correct Yep, Perfect. I can manage all the domains and I can change the name servers and I can, um, you know, forward and redirect and frame them and, you know, do all that kind of stuff all from within one account. Yep. That's perfect. That's what I would recommend. There aren't as many anymore, but there used to be a lot of registrars where it was basically just a one domain account. And so if you wanted to have multiple domain names, which as you get going in this, you're going to have domain names for your squeeze page and domain names for this. It just happens. <laughs> And it's a real pain if you have to log into separate accounts for every domain name you have. So as long as you've got that sort of a situation, I think that's good. And price. Price really varies on domain name registrars. There are some where you register a domain name for a year and it'll cost you $90 up to a couple hundred. I don't know if it still does. I don't know if those still exist, the, the couple hundred dollar ones. That's a while back now. But some of them are really expensive. And you go register the exact same domain name over at Namecheap for 10 bucks for a year. So just watch, watch that. And Jared, just from a kind of an SEO point of view, I get asked this question a lot, and I don't actually know the correct response. But I do get asked by people, you know, is it okay to have a hyphen or a underscore or, um, you know, whatever in a domain name? I mean, is, is the ideal to have just your, you know, your name with no gaps or is it all right to have a, a hyphen or something in there? Is that going to cause a, a problem? And also, another question um, is how, how, what keywords yeah, how, what's the impact of keywords in your how domain do you name? Use them and, mm. Yeah, those are actually really good questions from an SEO standpoint. You know, with the 
oncoming SE or uh, oncoming social media with social media becoming so important for traffic and all those things a lot of people forget that there still are more searches performed at Google than anywhere else online <laughs> and so those people looking for what you have they are searching at search engines so it, it is important when you can grab the low-hanging fruit when we talk about SEO when you can easily implement some quick easy things in your business that will help you significantly to to be able to get that traffic from Google when they're searching for you that's good and the domain name is one of those things so with um, with Google without going into a whole half hour speech on SEO with Google you have to understand what Google wants is they want to show their searchers people using their search engine to search the most relevant websites the best quality relevant website that's relevant to the search term that was typed into Google. So if somebody types in red beach ball, right, Google wants to find the best website, the most active website, the most informative and accurate website related to red beach balls and display that at the very top of their search results and the second one second and so on. So over the years um, they've had to find different ways to evaluate all of our websites and one of the things that they look at is that domain name. The domain name is one of the more important places to have one of your keyword phrases if you want to appear at the top of Google search engines. Now you don't have to. You don't have to at all, but it will it will happen quicker. You'll get in on that page one results page a lot quicker if you do have it. And so the best is um, to have your keyword phrase that you want to rank in Google for at the very beginning of your domain name. And to not have too many extra phrases so not too many extra characters because it's a it's an overall percentage Google's algorithm looks at okay here's the domain name it's made up of this many characters how many of those characters are made up of this keyword phrase that we're considering ranking that site for so so you wouldn't want to have you would want to have red beach balls 911 or 411.com would be good and it would be it would rank Ease, more easily than red beach balls to be used on your favorite beach.com because now you've hurt the relevancy. Anyways, with the hyphens, what I recommend is if you're going to use hyphens, try to limit it to one. Try to not go more than one. And the only reason is Google had to put in place something to avoid the issues with spammers. Spammers were setting up these spam websites that would be 10 words long really keyword rich words that they wanted to rank for and then they just put a hyphen between each one <laughs> and it just kinda got ugly for a while there but if you look at Google search results now you don't usually see those kinds of domains showing up on page one which is a problem if that's your domain so you want to make sure that you probably don't use more than one hyphen but that's how I would answer that question that's what I've used as my guidelines and that's how I do it also just to since we're talking about domain names, .coms and .nets and .orgs, if applicable, do get do get a little bit of priority with uh, Google. And when you register your domain name, if you register that domain name for longer than a year, so two years or more at a time, that actually can also help you with Google. Oh, really? Now yeah. there's something I totally didn't know. I never realized that at all. They're all, you know, they're all just little, little things. This helps a little bit. This helps a little bit. And if you start adding them up, they make a difference. And they're those things that are low-hanging fruit. You're building a business here that you hope is still going to be around after a year from now. So if you're going to redo it every year, why not do it for five years or something like that? It's not expensive. So. So you would get the .com, the .net, and the .org of of the domain. You can. I have before, but I would just get the .com. Oh, okay if you can if it's available get the dot com just simply for the the simple reason that that's the first that's the first one they're going to type in now if you're if you're running a website in a business that only targets australia then it makes sense to get a uh, you know uh, an australian .com .au business. or whatever yep. yeah yep same thing with uk or wherever you're at but mm. but if you're if you're targeting the world i would suggest Dot com if it's available and if it's not consider a dot net make sure the dot com isn't a direct competitor of yours yeah but, yeah 
Good stuff. Okay, so we've got our domain name. Um, we have decided what we're calling our business. We've gone into our, our GoDaddy or our Namecheap or whatever. We've bought our domain name. What do we do next? Next thing you're going to need is you're going to need to have a hosting account. So you're going to want to get hosting. And hosting, as most of the people on this call probably already know, is that's your that's your real estate on the internet where you can place your website. That's where you can say, okay, if somebody types in my domain, I want them to see this website. And you have to have a hosting account. I always call it, I, I compare it to the shopping mall. If you want to open a retail space in the shopping mall, you rent space within that mall, right? And that's where you put your shop. Well, it's kind of like the same thing. So you want to put your website on the internet, you need to rent or lease your space on the internet and you do that with a hosting account so with hosting accounts um, there are tons and tons of options but uh, to make your life simple what I recommend is that you use either HostGator or Bluehost when you're when you're getting started there are others and if you're already using something else that's probably just fine if it's working for you but I use HostGator uh, I like their control panel better than Bluehost's um, I think HostGator, they've done a fantastic job for me in, in my business. And you use HostGator as well, don't you, Joe? I do, yeah. I really like them. I've, I, I had somebody not very long ago, actually, post in uh, one of the groups that I'm on that they think HostGator are just terrible and, you know, they're just a mm -hmm. awful business but I just think they're brilliant I've had no problems at all with HostGator um, their customer service uh, their support their live chat and everything is superb I've always been able to get hold of somebody um, the the only thing I would say is um, I did have a problem with them when we set up the site originally we, we overloaded it a bit with data and we because we had a shared account and they didn't give us much notice of the fact that we'd overloaded it um, so that was that was a bit of a pain at the time because obviously we we were in a bit of trouble um, and so yeah so, so they didn't give us much notice of what was going on there um, and then even, the only oh sorry go on I was I was gonna say even that though is, is it was bad news for us for you at that time but if you think about it the other way that is actually good news if somebody else on our shared server does what we were doing to the traffic at that time I would prefer that HostGator shut that person down and then went and talked to him and asked questions instead of waiting while my site's suffering for what somebody else is doing. So I guess there's two two ways to look at it. But yeah, yeah we, we kind of yeah. wish they would have contacted us. Yeah, there was that, that, that when when we just sort of you know the site was just down, <laughs> yeah. and uh, that was a bit. And then the only other thing I would say about HostGator is their live chat is really good and you can always get hold of somebody. Um, but just like with any business. Um, you know, it's the the answers and the support is are as good as the person on the other end of the phone, um, and there are some really good techie people there, and there are some that clearly just read off a, a script and don't actually know the system very well. So it is a little bit of hit and miss when you go on to the live chat to to see if you can get somebody who actually knows what they're talking about. Um, but you know, I've used them since I started as a beginner. I found them very, they're very easy to use. It's very easy to set up email accounts. It's very easy to set up WordPress accounts. It's very easy to, you know, point your domains there and create subdomains and all that kind of stuff. So that's my recommendation. HostGator. Yeah. My, my, uh, I'll, I'd further that one step too and say if you do get one of those numpties, see what I did there? If you do <laughs> very, get good, one of those very good. Numpties <laughs> that don't seem to know what a hosting account is yet they're offering customer support through the live chat just disconnect and reconnect they're big enough that you'll get somebody else and yeah nothing wrong with that so yeah not that they're numpties they're all good people we're all at different stages I nearly put numpty as your description actually on the webinar for Friday but <laughs> I thought that would have been a bit rude and you're a not really bit. a num you're not really numpty honey <laughs> I appreciate that. Okay, so um, 
uh, Serge is saying my free hosting is through Chris Farrell membership. Is that okay? Uh, yeah, Chris has got his own servers. Chris, Chris has got a very secure um, server situation going on because he, I think, in the early days, Chris used HostGator as well, and then as he built his membership site and uh, you know uh, created all of that side of things, he then went uh, to a dedicated server. So Chris is not sharing his serving. He is his servers. He's actually using a dedicated server. Um, and of course, he's got Jeff and the team that help him manage that and uh, respond to all your queries and everything. So, if you are part of Chris's membership site and you're using his server, then then you're in very very uh, safe and capable hands. Yeah. Um, that control panel, whatever control panel the hosting company uses, that becomes really important because how easy to use your hosting control panel will determine how complicated it is and how overwhelmed you might get. And HostGator uses cPanel, the, the same control panel that Chris is using. He's also using cPanel. So, Sarah, you're seeing basically what I would see when I log into my hosting account over at HostGator, even though you're hosted over there at, at Chris's thing. So, yeah, it's, his hosting is great. So if you're there, stay right there. That's a perfect spot to be. Whereas, un very unfortunately, my membership site is actually hosted through um, something called my my control panel is a Plesk control panel. Mm -hmm. um, so all of my other sites and my other um, you know standalone um, you, you know sales pages or squeeze pages or things like that they're all under HostGator, um, and I find the cPanel very very easy to use. And if I ever go and set up a WordPress site or whatever, I definitely use the cPanel. Um, but when I need to do stuff over at the Social Networking Academy, um, then poor old Neil and I are dealing with Plesk, which is not as easy to use um, as uh, the host uh, as cPanel. It's bit of a, it's just a bit of a pain. And also, it's hosted on something called Cold Fusion, um, which again is not very compatible. So, for instance, right now at the moment, we're finding we're having some some issues with the, with the Social Network Academy blog. Um, it's not easy to update things. It's not uh, easy to back up. Um, a, a lot of the plugins that I use aren't compatible. And poor old Neil is you know spending all his day trying to make things work for me on the blog. So we're trying to look at another option for that at the moment. So. Do try and make sure that you, you know, you you stick with a, a, a standard. What's what's the difference there, Joe? I don't really. What, what's what Cold Fusion is like the? That's just like a type of, of 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 language within the server, is it? Yeah, yeah. It's just basically the the chosen platform. It's just the chosen platform that that the server administrator has has chosen. Depending on what kind of server your hosting account runs on, there are different kinds of databases, different kind of code will run, and all sorts of stuff. So yeah, I, Plesk is a pretty common one too, um, but not nearly as common as cPanel is. And the nice thing about choosing a host like HostGator that uses cPanel is that if you ever do move later, move choose to move your website somewhere else, the majority of hosts you're moving to will also be using cPanel. And when that's the case, you can go to your old hosting account that's using cPanel, do a big export, then go over to your new hosting account that's using cPanel and do a big import and you've just moved everything over. And to be able to do that with databases and lists and all sorts of files and images, that's a big deal. That saves you days of time in some cases. So. Um, Serge is just asking as well, when buying your domain name, you're asked about an email that goes along with the domain name. What is your advice with this? Um, Serge, do you mean when the registrar tries to sell you, um, you know, add, add an extra package on? Because it's totally not necessary. Once, you, once you've got that domain name, you can go into your cPanel and you can create as many web, web mail, uh, as many email clients as you like. You can create, you know, all different email addresses with that domain at the end. So, for instance, one of my domains is www.the-sna.com, and we actually use that. That one is on a secure server. We use that one to run um, things, uh, pages and stuff that we're going to use on Facebook so that we don't get any SSL warnings and all of that kind of stuff. Um, and I can have as many email accounts on that as well. So I could have joe at the-sna.com or admin at the-sna.com or whatever. So definitely don't purchase you know email addresses as an extra when you when you buy your domain name because you'll be able to do that from within your um, control panel really good tip really good question too Serge yeah 
Yeah, great question. Okay, Jared. So we've got our host here. We've got our domain name. We've we've put it on. Uh, we we've moved the name servers. So what you do when you buy your domain name is you have to go into the registrar, i.e. GoDaddy or Namecheap or whatever it is that you've bought your domain name through, and you have to go and um, change the name servers. So when you go and you buy your hosting account, so with HostGator for instance, one of the first things they'll do is send you an email and they'll give you your name servers. Okay, so these are little pieces of code that then point um, the domain name over to the hosting account. I've probably said that all wrong and I'll pass over to Jared in a minute to actually explain it properly. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> but basically what you do is you go into your domain registrar and you change the name servers um, so that they are the name servers of your hosting company. Um, and then you can go over to your hosting company and now start to play with that and uh, start to build and create your business. So what's the next thing they need to do, Jay? Okay, so the next thing is you've got to have a website. If you're going to run an online business, you've got to have a website. And we've talked about this before as well, where you've got to have your home on the Internet that you control. It becomes your publishing platform. It's where you publish all of your content and then link to it from different social media sites and all over the place. Um, but you are in control of it, and it's your home. It gives you... It, it, it gives you credibility because you look more professional. You actually have a website, and you've got it these days because everybody, every teenager even has a website, right? So you've got to have a, a, a website if you're going to run a business. And I recommend that to create that website, that you do it in a blog format. Well, you can have pages and blog posts, but that you use WordPress. WordPress is free, and WordPress installation if you're using HostGator or another cPanel host like Chris Farrell's hosting it's super super easy to install it goes really fast it's gonna just take you clicking a couple of buttons and choosing a password and it's installed so it makes it really really easy the, the benefit of using WordPress be, there are tons of benefits but the big benefit is that you don't have to spend nearly as much time or money if you were to outsource and pay somebody else to build your site you don't have to invest nearly as much in getting your website up it's up fast it can look very professional because there's a huge community of designers and developers that support the open source WordPress platform so you log into your your HostGator account and you scroll down and you're gonna see something that says either uh, Fantastico Deluxe or Simple Scripts and both of them work really well. I use Fantastico Deluxe and you just click on it and then you follow the on-screen instructions to install WordPress on your hosting account and you're literally done in two minutes. It's, it's installed. I couldn't you, believe it the first time I did it. You know, I, I, I searched everywhere for education on how to get a WordPress site up on my host gator. I mean, I must have watched a gazillion videos, and it was crazy. It drove me mad because everybody would talk about the benefits and all the rest of it, but I could not find one single video that just showed me how to do it. And eventually, I found some on Chris's site. Jeff the Web Guy had done them, right? And I love Jeff the Web Guy. I don't know, guys, who's here is on Chris's membership. And I haven't spoken to Jeff the Web Guy for ages, but I used to melt at Jeff's accent. He's got this lovely southern drawl on his webinars. I used to comment on it all the time and say, oh, Jeff, just talk. Just talk to me. Talk to me. <laughs> anyway, Jeff had this series of videos. Um, and to be honest with you, I had to go through three videos. He wanted to explain the ins and outs of, of WordPress and and uh, you know all the different coding and all the rest of it and I'm like wow this is gonna be so complicated and I eventually got to like his third or fourth video in his series and he went through how to actually you know create a WordPress site and I had to rewind and watch again because I thought well that can't actually be it can it is that have I just spent three hours watching these videos to find out that I've got to click a button and, and you know, <laughs> just uh, type in a password and boom, my WordPress site is there in front of me. And sure enough, that was it. And now, if you go into cPanel, you could create a WordPress site. It's like a Facebook page. Yeah, when I, I paid somebody originally, many years ago when I was in offline business, I actually paid a guy to build me a Facebook page. I had no idea how to do it. It looked really, really complicated. Um, and I paid some guy $50 to basically build me a Facebook page for 
in my business, which I hasten to add, I then never used because I wasn't really a Facebook person and I only did it because one of my marketing team thought I should. Um, so when I actually found out how to build a Facebook page and realized that you could do it in like three minutes flat, I was like, God, these things look complicated and then they're, they're not. You know, why do people make these things look so complicated? So it takes three minutes to create a Facebook page and it takes literally three minutes to create a WordPress website. I mean, you know, it's so simple, it's untrue. So, does everybody agree? <laughs> <laughs> this is supposed to be interactive. Comments, comments, come on, join in. Sorry, Jay, go on. <laughs> no, I, I had I'm like a, similar... a I'm like a compare on stage, aren't I? Come on, join in, come on. <laughs> Sorry, Jay, go on. <laughs> Are you sure this thing? Okay. <laughs> um, no, I actually had a very similar experience myself, Joe. I was, um, did you want to say something? Okay, I was... Um, I was actually running a web design company at the time and so I was designing and developing websites for my clients and somebody said you really should just get into WordPress and try that out and so I I said oh, I can't imagine doing that and having to learn all that on top of what the code and stuff that I'm already doing and <laughs> I like that that's a good lower third <laughs> um, um, but yeah I was blown away I installed it and I thought you mean I've been spending weeks building these custom websites for people and I could be spending a day literally installing it and then just customizing some templates and things and it it completely changed my business I mean I was able to do in one day what took me weeks before and so yeah anyway WordPress is is really really a great platform and um, also since we started off at the beginning here talking a little bit about SEO and what Google likes Google really likes blogs Google really likes the, the nature of a WordPress website because the nature of a WordPress website is that it is a blog that is updated with current relevant information on a regular basis. So it's not one of those stale, outdated websites with information that isn't accurate anymore. Uh, they just assume that, oh yeah, look, this blog is being posted to regularly and it's just a great way to establish relationships with your prospects. It's a great place to post your content and it's the fastest way to get your home or your publishing platform live. Joe, I'm just looking on. yeah, I'm just looking at some of the comments here. Sorry, Jay, as we're going down. And Joe Martin, I've I, I was asked this question last week actually and I don't know the answer because I've never used it. Joe's just asking what's your opinion on Weebly compared to WordPress? I've never used Weebly, Jay. I've looked at it and it's good for getting a, a, a basic site up. They have some really nice features. The thing about Weebly is the designs. They're such nice designs um, that are created for, for Weebly. I haven't used it enough to say yay or nay, it's as good. The one thing I know though is that there's a much bigger support community. M many more template options, many more plugin options, many more help posts for little issues you might come across with WordPress so um, I recommend w WordPress but if you're comfortable using Weebly and that's that's what you've been using lots of people do and it'll do the job it'll do the job definitely um, j j and j also just commenting on your um, on your comments about uh, the fact that um, Google like the way WordPress sites work because you're constantly sort of creating this dynamic content you know, I'm sure probably all of you watching this know this. I mean, this is a very basic session we're doing here today. We kind of wanted to start at the beginning, you know, and as we as we do the episodes and grow, we'll do more and more advanced marketing stuff. But we kind of wanted to start at the beginning, really, so that it's a bit of a journey for people watching uh, the show. Um, but it's really important, I think, that you guys, if you're out there and you're talking to other people or you're educating beginners or you're helping local businesses with their marketing or whatever, that you really do drive home this social, dynamic, interactive um, thing uh, because that really is what marketing on the you know across the board is all about now and it's not just social media which is the kind of buzzword um, 
but it's just very important that businesses understand that they can they can no longer just put up a website a static website that shows their products shows their services um, you know and does nothing just sits there um, and I, I see many of them when I'm researching and I'm looking at things I still see hundreds and hundreds of very static um, web pages and let me just tell you I, um, I I think I may have told this story before so I apologize if I'm repeating myself but when I had my offline business I decided that I wanted to get some advice from somebody who knew more about the business than I did right um, and uh, because my business it, it grew at a rapid rate and then it declined at an equally rapid rate and uh, it was on the it was on the decline and I have to be honest with you I was getting very um, what's the word very demotivated you know and all the rest of it and so I wanted to learn from somebody who knew better than, than I did and so I, I started to research on the internet and I was in the property business and I, and I found a guy who used to be the managing director of Foxton's which is a huge huge real estate and um, but you know sales and rentals uh, property business in London absolutely huge they were the biggest of their kind for years they were the first people to kind of bring in um, you know shop for a house and have a coffee yeah so they kind of brought in the little coffee shops into their estate agency shops and everything they were absolutely huge and um, the the MD so not the top top guy but the next guy down had left Foxton's and gone to start his own business and I found him on the internet and he stood out like heads and shoulders above everybody else on the internet. And do you know why? Because his site was based on a blog format. I have I have no doubt it's probably WordPress behind it or whatever, but his whole site was based on a blog format. Um, there, there were updates every day on different aspects of the property business, uh, new properties that they had just bought on the books, um, things going on. Um, they had social media all over their site as well, so you could like and share and do all that kind of stuff. And he himself, the owner of the company, every week did a video all about the current market, you know, what was going on in London right now and what was happening with the housing market and why people. Uh, what people needed to do and you know he just had all these tips and each week the owner of the company was getting on that blog and he was creating a video and his whole site he had the the you know static side which is showcasing the properties and showcasing the, the services and all the rest of it but he had that really um, you know dynamic interactive side where people could come and comment and all the rest of it and I have no doubt in my mind now he'll have a Facebook page and a Twitter account and all that kind of stuff going yeah um, and I ended up writing to him and he was very accommodating and we actually ended up having lunch in London and it was you know I learned a lot and it was it was great um, but the key thing is is I found him because I went searching and his website was coming up at the top of all of the London um, agents uh, and you know he just had that perfect mix on his site and so many businesses just don't do that okay so it really is important that you drive home to people that you're speaking to about the whole dynamic interaction and therefore that's why both Jared and I really do recommend WordPress because um, you know you, you you can just create so much content on there and cr constantly update and renew and all the rest of it and that's what Google are looking for now they're not it's not about backlinks anymore it's not about how many backlinks can you get and um, you know link bait and all that kind of stuff that's not what they're going to be looking for anymore back backlinks um, in my understanding Jared and I'm not an SEO specialist but from what I'm reading backlinks are becoming less and less um, you know certainly with social media because people are just sharing stuff on social media so it's not you know you're not getting that kind of back linkage as much anymore and, and it's just becoming less and less important than relevant content re renewed content popular content content that people are liking sharing commenting plus oneing um, you know all of that kind of stuff that is going to become more and more important um, to businesses and so if you are an educator then uh, you know, just take that on board, and um, and just just the other thing to finish that as well, just to back up what Jared was saying about the support. Um, you know, there's such a massive community of people out there supporting WordPress. All of these guys that create these plugins and stuff like that, they're just making it so easy to build and create your own websites. So, am I am I right, Jared, with the whole kind of backlink thing? Yeah, definitely. Backlinks still are a good. I mean, if you can get a good quality backlink to your website that still will help you in the rankings but 
yes, you're absolutely right that it's less and less important as time goes on. I like there's a the, the Gary Vaynerchuk quote. Um, he says, and and he's one of the best marketers out there, most popular, most well-known marketers out there, and he says, marketers ruin everything. <laughs> and so he's totally right. But So Google had to find a way. Remember Google's goal. They're trying to determine which website related to the search term that was typed in is the most relevant and high quality uh, website so they can display those at the top of their results. And so what Google started out doing was saying, well, they say they're the best. Okay, well, let's put them at the top. They say they're the best by having that exact keyword phrase the most number of times. Well, then marketers ruin everything. Marketers started putting the same keyword phrase tons and tons of times on the page to where it didn't even really read or make sense. People just wanted to get the ranking and put an ad on it or whatever. So then they had to move to something else that would help them determine which website was best. And so they used these incoming links. They figured, okay, well, if a... Uh, unbiased third-party website is linking to the content on this website that must be a good vote for the content on this website so then they could compare all the different websites related to red beach balls and see who has the most votes so that's where the links came in and then marketers ruined that and so they couldn't just determine it based on the number of links they had to go to okay let's look at the quality of these links how how many other links are on that page and is this a reputable website? Let's assign quality scores to these links. Well, now marketers have ruined that as well, and so it's becoming less and less important. Uh, and the social signs are becoming more and more important. We'll actually talk about that with another one of these resources we'll talk about with how social media has really, really started to affect uh, you know, how search engines work and, and how results are displayed and organized. So yeah. I, OK, I so, so sorry, Jay, sorry. No, 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 I said I do agree with you. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Okay, all right. So, what's next? We've got our, we've, we've, we've built our website. We've created our website and blog. What do we do now? So we have our domain. We have hosting. We have a website. We need an autoresponder. That's the very next thing. You need to have the ability to collect email addresses and start building a prospects list. You have to be able to generate leads. If you're not building a list then you're having one opportunity to get in front of people. And if you're going to get in front of people, you might as well collect those leads and be able to get in front of people more and more and more. Um, if they're on your list, you can send follow-up emails out to them later. More importantly, even than just the monetization and the numbers part, though, is like you said earlier, Joe, it's all about those relationships that you're going to build. The key to your experience with the guy's website that you found and how it was the blog format, the real key to that story is you compared. You looked at his versus others and he won because he's doing what is something that you were looking for. And, and that's how people are searching online. They're finding the ones that they want and they're comparing them. So that's why you can't have that static website. You have to do something and engage. And the, the key is that whole relationship marketing thing. Um, you want to be building relationships and when you start providing some really high quality content in exchange for contact information you're building your list and that becomes the, the very core the very foundation of your business if you want to have a long-term business and um, it's just you've got to have it that's essential if you do nothing else for the next six months but build your list that would be a really good use of your time if you want to have a long-term business so I that's what you need so when we say an autoresponder we're talking about something like Aweber and uh, you use Aweber and I think you use eye contact as well is that right and I've yeah. used um, one shopping cart as well and there's there are all sorts of them out there Aweber is pretty standard so if you want to keep things simple for, for yourself probably probably Aweber would be the way to go would you say Joe yeah, can I just, um, before I sort of talk technically about Aweber, I just want to mm -hmm. say um, just about list building in general. Um, I hate the word list. I mean, I really, really hate the word list. It is the quickest and easiest way to describe uh, a customer database because customer database is quite a long-winded thingy, but essentially that's exactly what it is. It is a customer database. I, I, I really despise the word list because it just sounds like, um, you know, a massive cattle market of 
you know, whatever, <laughs> of, of not human beings, you know, a list of uh, email addresses. Um, you know, I want you to think about your list as a customer database, you know, because that is what it is. These are your prospective customers. These are people who are interested in in you, in your business, in what you've got to say, um, in your offer, uh, and uh, they need to be treated as such, as customers. Um, but I get so many people that talk to me about how expensive it is, you know, how expensive Aweber is and how, or how expensive, um, you know, eye contact is or whatever that, you know, you've got to start paying out $30 a month or $50 a month or whatever. My answer to that is, you know what, guys, if you, um, you know, don't want to pay out a monthly fee for what is essentially the engine, the core of your business, which is your customers. Nobody has a business without customers. You know, that is that is it and and done. I mean, somebody's going to prove me wrong now and come up and give me a business that doesn't have customers. But do you know what I mean? <laughs> customers are the absolute lifeblood of your business. Brian Tracy talks about the purpose of a business being um, keeping, retaining current customers and attracting new ones. That's like the entire core being purpose of a business is to is to retain current customers and attract new ones and your autoresponder is essentially your that is the absolute lifeblood of your business so no matter what else you do let's say that you decide that you can't afford hosting or you can't afford to do a website so you go and you use a Facebook page instead and you you miss out the whole web I don't advise this but you miss out the whole website side and you go and you use a Facebook page or a Twitter account and you just use social media in order to build your profile if that's what you decide to sacrifice as long as you keep that or as long as you get out there and invest in that autoresponder and start building that customer database that is, you know, the, the most important part of your business. That is the core of your business because you, I mean, I literally built my entire business on Facebook. I kind of shunned the whole blog for months and I did all right, you know. I created an entire business just using Facebook. Um, I look back now and really, really wish that I'd started a blog at the same time as I'd started my presence on Facebook. I really, really do. Um, because blogging is, it, it, you reach a whole nother universe of people um, with your with your website and your blog, um, and and I my my website would have been you know much higher up the rankings and having a lot more hits now had I have started all that way back. So I totally advise, totally advise you doing that. But if you were going to take something out of the mix, then make sure it's not your autoresponder. That is the one thing that does. Um, require your investment and uh, you know don't don't scrimp and save on that one get a good autoresponder a reliable one one that's going to give you a really good um, you know mail out rate don't just think because you've got a whole lot of people on your list uh, you know that you then send them out an email and every single one of them is going to get your email because unfortunately it doesn't work that way um, and certainly with some of the free uh, or cheap options of autoresponders they'll be blacklisted by um, you know uh, what is it, DNS, D domain name server blacklisting or something, I think it was, um, it, you know, because pe lots of people would have gone for free accounts and would have started spamming people and sending rubbish out. And if, uh, if an autoresponder um, platform gets too many spam reports or too many blockages or whatever, then, uh, you know, actual domain name servers will blacklist them and the emails won't necessarily get through so you won't have a high deliverability rate I think it's called a deliverability of your emails and you want to make sure that as many of your uh, customer database as possible are receiving your content so that's my that's my view and just on Aweber I've used Aweber since day one um, and I have found them very very reliable um, I have a very high open rate on my Aweber. Um, I, I tend to get anywhere between a 35 to a 40 percent open rate on pretty much all of my emails, which is, uh, can I just put my hands up there and say that that is pretty, pretty extraordinary in the business we're in. Um, but that's because, um, that's because of that whole relationship thing. That's because, you know, I've built a relationship with people and um, I'm very uh, prolific online as well. And I get told quite a lot that when people open my emails, they can hear me. <laughs> they could they read it with my voice in their head. They can hear me, you know, right in right in the email, <laughs> which I think is very very positive. Um, so, but that also tells me that Aweber are giving me a very good deliverability rate if I'm getting that kind of open rate. Do you know what I mean? I know that most of my emails are getting through. Um, 
The only thing I would say about Aweber right now is that they've got this new template layout and uh, and it's an absolute pain in the backside to use only because it's really buggy. Um, the actual template layout itself is fine. The drag and drop elements and stuff like that, they work no problem. But they've got all sorts of bugs in there at the moment. I'm presuming it's because it's quite new um, and it's frustrating the living daylights out of me at the moment because I'm I'm trying to you know create create emails and there's all these bugs and my fonts keep changing and you know all that all that kind of stuff as I'm going through so they're just a bit buggy right now but they're very um, they're good yeah yeah they do a good job one thing I would clarify with with Awer when we say you need an autoresponder we're referring to the the that you need an account with somewhere like Aweber. We're not necessarily saying that you have to build out an autoresponder, like a follow-up sequence, where a lot of people get concerned about the popular internet marketers that you all know of that don't have a follow-up sequence. They just do broadcasts and send out emails. But the point is you need a place to be able to gather that information, the contact information, and be able to then send out to those people one way or another, whether it's a follow-up or just a one-off, I'm going to send a broadcast out today, whatever. You need to be able to build and, and manage your database of, of prospects. Yeah. And Anybody Joey, got any comments on that? Anybody got any comments on the whole kind of autoresponder thing? Sorry, Jay, what were you going to say? I was just going to say you are like a, the prime example of that relationship stuff we're talking about. Because you're so prolific online, you're always on there engaging and commenting and offering help and asking questions and um, you know, some of, I won't name any names, but some of those guru types out there, you know, can you picture them going on saying, I don't know how to do this. How do, how do I do this? They would never do that, but it makes you real. You're, you're real, and people really can relate to that. And so um, those relationships, just building and scaling those one-on-one -on -one relationships, huge, huge, huge. And your, your AWeber account is a good, good, important way to do that. So mm -hmm. really good. MailChimp, any good is something Heidi's asking and I've heard good things about MailChimp. Um, the deliverability isn't quite as high from what I understand and they have some interesting limits um, but people do use them. Integrating MailChimp with different different uh, oh, different platforms like implementing it into WordPress and implementing it into Facebook and using it in different scenarios other than just on a regular website is a bit more complicated they're getting better. It's a little bit more complicated than than just going with Aweber and using their forms. But uh, a lot of people use them. A lot of people do use them. I think you have uh, maybe it's just the free account they offer that has a, a quantity limit of how many how many people you can manage in your in your database. But but yeah, I have heard a lot of people using that. So, definitely. Can I just answer Ron's question down here, actually? Uh, Ron has, has said, could you compare Facebook with WordPress as an e-commerce platform if you already have a large Facebook following? Oh, hold on a second. Sorry. It's just gone down. People are commenting. Uh, if you already have a large Facebook following, would you also need WordPress and why? Ron in Miami. Great question, Ron. And I can see that Carol has answered you um, with uh, Facebook is a tool, not an asset. It doesn't belong to you, but your WordPress website does. She's absolutely on the ball there. A couple of things I just want to say about that. Firstly, remember Facebook is a third-party tool and it's free. Okay, so you could build an entire business on Facebook like I did um, and if, if that's where everything is, you're really at risk. If Facebook decided they didn't like something I was doing while I was doing it, they could have shut me down and I'd have had no recourse and I would have lost, um, you know, kind of all of that momentum that I was gathering on Facebook. So I was really, really being very risky with my strategy of just relying on my Facebook page to build my business. Um, so I would definitely, definitely recommend that you also have a WordPress site uh, because that's that's yours. You're going to own all of that content. I'm talking about WordPress.org here, not WordPress.com. Self-hosted WordPress.org site um, that you you create, and that's where it's going to house all your content. And then what you do, Ron, is you uh, go use your Facebook page as the tool to alert people to things happening on your page. Now, this is very challenging on Facebook because pe what people when they're on Facebook they want to stay on Facebook. They don't actually want to be linking off and going all to all these different other places. So um, you, you've kind of got this balancing act there of actually kind of taking um, content from your blog and putting enough of it on Facebook to really um, wet 
your audience's appetite on Facebook enough that they actually do want to come off Facebook and have a look at your content. You know, that's a kind of a marketing skill um, in itself uh, that you really are kind of um, building those relationships with the people on Facebook so that they do want to come and explore more of what you've got to offer. Okay, so definitely, definitely. And as far as e-commerce is concerned, it has been proven and uh, has been written about now um, quite significantly about how some big companies companies have come and tried to set up uh, e-commerce on Facebook and it has failed, drastically failed um, and that's because people aren't used to buying off of Facebook yet. It's a bit ahead of its time that whole e-commerce directly on Facebook. Um, people just aren't, they're on there to chat, it's a very social, social network, they're on there to chat, uh, talk to friends, get information, um, you know, we, we are in the, uh, gosh, I, I can't remember what, Robert Scoble uh, came up with a great comment the other day about the the kind of era that we're now in but we are in the era of free information really we are in the era of massive boatloads of free information and that's essentially what people are on Facebook to do so they're not used to shopping on Facebook yet they won't they won't be sat on Facebook with their credit card out yet uh, whereas on Google people are still very much using search terms in order to go, be very specific about what they're looking for and there's a much higher percentage of people there with their credit cards out because they are actually looking very specifically for something they're searching for it they want to go they want to buy it um, and so if your site has an e-commerce element on it uh, and and you're starting to rank well in the rankings you're going to get a much better result e-commerce wise than I think you would on Facebook um, right now yeah absolutely absolutely in fact you know as far as when we talk about e-commerce platform platforms you could still advertise some of your products but like like you were saying Joe it's been proven that putting your whole e-commerce website with listing all your products and everything there on Facebook has been proven just not to work very well so what I would recommend is have WordPress or your your whatever you're using for your shopping cart system but have your your product line be displayed on your website and then maybe list some specials or things like that on Facebook so that if you have built up a good following that you can show what your specials are and link over to the website where they can actually check out and, and, and buy. That question is a great question and your comments are a great comment, great comments, Joe, and they actually they actually transition us really great because the next tool I had on my list was you've got to, right now, you've got to have a Facebook account. Now it is a tool, you know, you don't want to have this in place of a website, I don't believe, but you want to have it because right now you want to get your message and and your offers and your free content and everything you can in front of the people who are most interested in it and then start to build relationships with them and right now there is no better place to do that than Facebook and so you gotta be there you gotta go where your people are and someday that will be somewhere else I'm sure of it but right now it's Facebook so you gotta be there initiating those conversations using um, Facebook pages is a powerful way to do the e-commerce stuff and lots of other things but but really really make use of your Facebook account do you have anything else besides what you were sharing that you'd like to say about the necessity of having Facebook as a tool in your business Joe you know, you know what my thoughts are on Facebook. <laughs> I do. I do. <laughs> <laughs> I think everybody here watching does. Um, you know, it's a, just an absolute given. You must, you must, must, must be on the social platforms. If Facebook isn't your thing, you need to make sure that you're on Twitter or you're on Google or you know you're on Pinterest now, which I always never thought was going to get as big as it has, but it, but it has. Um, you know, you, you. I don't know, it's, it's, it's a really tough one actually because I get so many people that say, but I don't want to be a public figure. Well, then you've got to make sure that your brand is out there in the social networks. If you, if you don't want it to be you, then you must make sure that it is your brand and that you're out, you've got to be seen. You've got to be in it to win it, you know, and uh, that, that's where everybody is now. You've got to be where Robert Kiyosaki used to talk about the fact that you, you need to stand in front of, you know, where everybody's going. You need, you need to stand right in I can't I'm terrible with quotes guys actually do you know what I mean I always remember roughly what they say but I can't remember what the exact quote is um, 
but I remember Robert Kaizaki from Rich Dad Poor Dad saying something along the lines of, you know, you need to stand right in front of where all of the traffic is going, you know, where all of the people are going, what direction are they going in, you need to be right, stood right in front of them. Um, and where is everybody right now? Where is the whole world literally, you know, or a massive proportion of the world? They're all on the social networks. They're all on Facebook, mainly. Um, they're all on Twitter. You know, a high proportion of them are on Pinterest. A high proportion of them are going to be on Google+. I, I, I don't think we should underestimate the power of Google+, Plus in the future, um, especially for local business and businesses that want to rank highly. Um, so you are missing a huge trick if you're not in front of these people. Uh, one of the things I would say, though, about the difference between a brand and a public figure. Okay, this is just my opinion. But when we're talking about relationship building, and it is all about relationship building, if you are prepared to step out from behind your brand and start to build personal relationships with people, your company will be more successful than a company that's not prepared to do that. That is my absolute 100% sincere belief because people do business with people. People do business with people they like, know, and trust. Yeah, um, And if you are prepared to stick your, your head above the parapet and say, I am this business, I am the person behind this business, and I want to build a relationship with you, um, then you know then, then you are going to be more successful and, and why is that the case because we are now in an era where there is a level playing field it's not all about the massive corporations anymore the small business because of the global impact of the internet the small business is now able to create an incredible following of people a small business is now able to create a huge presence online um, and rival some of the big corporations. Um, now I'm the first one to admit that sites like Facebook are not making it as easy for us as they were. Um, you know, all the, some of the recent changes with the timeline and the, the ads and the promoted posts and things like that definitely seem to favour um, the slightly larger business. But that being said, it is still an incredible platform for building those relationships, um, you know, for for raising your profile, for getting a great reputation, and for adding a lot of value and creating lots and lots of content. So, um, I'm totally, uh, obviously, a complete advocate of, of, of Facebook and social media in general. Um, and... Uh, yeah, I just think it's an absolute necessity. I think it's an absolute necessity and that you, you, you just ca cannot do without it. And it's not an expense. It's not an, it's yeah. not an added expense, you know. Um, it's you know, to use Facebook, to build a Facebook page, to create a profile on Facebook, to communicate with people and build a following and a list of subscribers and all the rest of it. It's free. It's completely free. And the bottom line is your competitors are doing it. And just like your experience earlier with the guy who you found his website that was better than everybody else's the customers compare you compared people are gonna compare so whether you're excited to or not <laughs> uh, I think I don't even necessarily agree with if Facebook just isn't your thing you can go do one of the others I think Facebook is a must and I think um, I think that because that that's where people are at and your competitors are there and so when the customer compares they've already established some sort of a relationship over here with your competitor who's there if you're not and so you need to be there too and it's just it's just essential social media like you said in general is essential and the last two on my list because I know we're, we're about time here the last two on my list are uh, YouTube another social media site and the reason I have YouTube on there as an essential is because you have got to be using video you don't have to be professional at it but again this is part of being in it to win it this is putting yourself out there a little bit get some get some video skills and some some training um, and learn the basics it's super super easy these days to learn it don't feel bad if you haven't yet don't feel bad at all but in an in an afternoon you can learn enough to get a simple video up on YouTube and you can do it all right there with YouTube with without having to spend tons of money on lots of lots of extra tools and resources but you want to use video content because it's it's just it's more and more important it's what people are looking for it's what converts it what it's what grabs people's attention and 
you know, until we have whatever futuristic holographic computer 3D thing in front of us that everybody's using to actually speak in front of people, video's it. So <laughs> use video. That doesn't mean the written word is devalued at all. You can do some great stuff with blog posts and articles and books and all that stuff, but video, if you're marketing online, it is huge and you want to definitely, definitely use video. So that's why I recommend a YouTube account. There are other places you can host videos, but right now the stuff that YouTube has going on I think is just amazing. I mean the fact that we can stream live to YouTube right now. That's just, mm. that's huge. That's amazing. So yeah, that's that's my take on, on YouTube and then the, the last one is a Google Plus account. And I think that Google Plus, as you mentioned earlier, it's going to become more and more important moving forward. And the interesting thing is it's always been pitched as a social media platform that's not why I think it's going to be important. It's going to be important not because of how it compares to Facebook, but it's going to be important because of how what you post and what kind of reputation you have and what things go on with your account on Google Plus is going to affect more and more your search listings and your ability to get traffic from Google as a search engine. And so that's in a nutshell, that's the quick and dirty why I think Google Plus is important. Not necessarily because, like Facebook, everybody's there, because everybody's not. It started out with a bang, but it hasn't picked up momentum. And Google said, we don't care. We're not a social platform. It has to do with search. So Google is tracking all these different things where it used to be just those incoming links that determined who got listed up at the top. Google now owns YouTube, and they can track your videos. Google knows what's going on on your website because you've put their Google Analytics code on your website and asked them, please track what's going on on my website. So Google's tracking activity on your website. If a website, if two websites being compared next to each other, website A gets a lot more visitors clicking around and clicking on more pages than website B, Google figures, well, website A must be a better website for us to list higher up in our rankings. And Google Plus, just gives them that much more of an opportunity to be able to get their hands on those signals and use them in their algorithms to determine who they send the traffic to. So, uh, so yeah, those are my last two. What are your thoughts on YouTube and, and Google Plus, Joe? I totally agree that we shouldn't underestimate the power of Google Plus. And yeah. uh, what, I, what I actually love is the fact that you know last year we were all all us kind of social media people um, were saying, oh, who's going to win the battle, Google Plus or Facebook, Google Plus or Facebook, and you know what, they're not comparable anymore because Google Plus has shifted, you know, it's, it's, it's being very clear in saying we're not, we're not a social media network, we're not like Facebook, you know, just for all the reasons that you've just, you've just said, oh, am I still there? Yes, I am still here. Um, and so, yeah. So I, I, I don't think you should underestimate the power of Google Plus and I think the sooner um, you can just start to get on Google Plus and just start to put a little bit of content on there and just start to have a little bit of a presence, um, I think you'll find in, in the, the, the coming you know, years, uh, months and years, that will stand you in good stead. And um, don't feel bad if you, if you haven't started yet. It's not too late. No. It's not too late oh, if you gosh, haven't no. done a lot with Facebook. It, the whole internet is so young and Facebook's even younger and Google Plus is even younger and they're going to evolve and the sooner you get involved then you can kind of evolve with it as it changes. Just like Joe has done with Facebook, you know, her trainings when she first started teaching Facebook even just a couple years ago, um, there have been huge changes and so you evolve with it and you implement and you learn and you're, it, just don't feel like you're too late. You haven't missed the boat. It's just okay. starting. So now's a great time to get in and get started. Now, we have run over. We have run over the hour, um, but we've got a few questions. Um, before I answer those questions, can I just say, um, uh, just very quickly to the guys that are watching, please, please pass this on. A, please tell everybody about Marketing Mayhem, because we obviously want to get more and more people coming here. It's every single uh, Wednesday night at 7.45 Eastern Standard Time, US. Uh, secondly, next Tuesday at 5.30 Mountain Time, um, which will be 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, US, I'm actually going to be 
interviewing live um, Josh Anderson, who is the creator of Nanocast. Uh, and Nanocast is a membership platform. It's not just a membership platform. It's a it's a massive platform of e-commerce and membership and websites and all sorts. Um, and he's the creator of Nanocast and a very interesting guy. And he's going to be talking about product creation. He's going to be talking all about um, how to create products and kind of how to distribute products in a kind of a multifaceted way. Um, so very very interesting chap. And that's going to be next Tuesday. Again, it's going to be a live. Google Hangout just like this one and I'll be uh, just you know telling people all about that and the links and sending it out in an email and obviously putting the links as well in on the uh, on my page on the wall in the group etc uh, so that's next Tuesday at 7:30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time US um, and then my last little announcement is just the power of being on the social networks I just wanted to to just add um, just blow my own trumpet for a second um, but I made it onto a blog post <laughs> yesterday as one of the top 100 people to subscribe to on social media um, and uh, it's a it's a blog simplyzesty.com who I read on my Google reader all the time and I see on Zite on my iPad and you know it's a great little blog and, and they're out there all the time so it's a good little blog to get onto but there's the power of um, just being out there on, on social media and constantly producing content and engaging and creating relationships and stuff like that that you'll start to get seen people will start to see you and then other people will start to recommend you as well and start to recommend your business so it really is powerful stuff um, you know being on the platforms and and I th it was Heidi I think who asked um, asked all about um, you know how do you come up with enough content and in all honesty Heidi my answer to that is how do how do I stop coming up with content <laughs> I actually had to apologize to my list for sending out an email um, all about our webinar on Friday because I've literally sent out an email every day this week because I've just had so much stuff to share with them. Um, most of it is completely free content. Obviously, the webinar we're talking about, Jared and, and, and I's new coaching program, um, but literally everything I send is mainly go and have a look at my blog post or, you know, come and check out this, this new webinar or come and have a look at this or, you know, download my new social media strategy doc or whatever um, Heidi whatever niche you're in there is just an abundance of content out there an abundance of things happening um, you just need to literally just dig right in find out what's going on in your niche find out what's going on in your industry um, and uh, and just you know grab that content and create you know create your own content out of it or share and link to that content with your own comments um, with your own opinions that kind of stuff. There's just so much stuff out there. It's crazy. Um, if, you've, if you've built on a, a topic or a niche that you're passionate about, that becomes really a lot easier too. And so that's where picking something you're passionate about is is really huge. But just a really quick exercise, Heidi. Take your niche that you've chosen, if you've chosen a niche or one that you're considering, and get on a notebook and a pencil, not a computer, a notebook and a pencil, and tell yourself, I'm going to write down 50 just topics related to this whether they're broad or really specific doesn't matter get really specific when you can though and just write down as many topics as as you can that you might be able to write a blog post about and see if you can get at least 50 and then once you get to 50 you can continue later but stop and then go over to Google and type in some of those things on your list and see what blogs come up and then look through at least three or four of their blog categories and see if you can add some more to your list and you'll find if you'll just do that even just that alone within within less than an hour you'll have a few hundred easy a few hundred topics that you could you could you know post about so that's a quick exercise you can do and it'll surprise you you'll surprise yourself you'll surprise yourself you're picking a niche because you know a little something about it and you can help people within that topic and so as you start writing some ideas you'll think oh well that kinda leads to this and you'll get you'll find you get a lot of ideas really quickly but when you do it in advance like that I find it makes it a lot easier okay I've got these topics I even have some other blog posts that other people have written that I can refer to as a reference and then share my own ideas on the topic it goes a lot easier so just wanted to share that just real quick exercise that makes a big difference uh, great okay that's awesome um, 
uh, Julie Zommers, a, a, a basic good quality camera. You're talking about for on camera recording. So, I mean, obviously, just a webcam on your computer is good enough. You can literally sit in front of your computer and just, you know, like we are. I'm just using the webcam on my computer here. But for an, uh, just using a camera out and about, um, a, a little Kodak. Uh, Play Touch is what I use. I use the Kodak Play Touch, which is the uh, latest version of the ZI8, and um, I use that because you can put in an external mic feed. Yeah, but you can just get like a little flip video camera, something like that. But if you want good quality sound, then I use um, a Kodak Play Touch because that that allows me to put in an external mic, and then I can get some decent sound there. Um, and a headset for your computer, yeah, I never used to use a headset in the early days and if you actually listen to a lot of my early day videos, they sound quite echoey um, and that's because you know I'm obviously using them with the built-in mic on my computer and, and whatever room I'm sat in. So a headset is very good for recording because it just gives you a much better sound quality on your videos. Um, and uh, Tigris Khan has just said, what do you recommend as an autoresponder? We, we went through that, so we recommend Aweber, and if you want to see why, then please do, um, when, when this feed is uh, replayed on YouTube, please just pop back and have a look at all of our reasons why, because we had quite a long discussion about that. And then Heidi uh, has said, I created an app quite a while ago with your help, Joe, but is that the best way to go, or is it best to just have a business page on Facebook? Well, apps... Um, the apps that I would have created with you, Heidi, would have been an app that actually goes on your business page. Yeah. Um, so you have a business page on Facebook, and then one of the best ways uh, to really grow your your customer database is to have a landing page on your Facebook page. Okay. And your landing page has your opt-in form on it, and that's the apps that I teach people to do how to how to you know, build landing pages um, and put those on their Facebook pages and uh, that's how I grow my customer database list pretty much. You know, that's that's where I get all my sign ups for my for my list um, through through a landing page on Facebook. And the only way to get people to that landing page on Facebook is to be prolific on the social networks, to get out there, to produce content. I mean what do you think Jared and I are doing right now? This is content. We're producing content. What we're doing right now is is producing content, and you can produce content out of anything and everything. You know, it's all around you. <laughs> um, and Tracy is saying, uh, Tracy Ray Thierry is saying, I use my iPad 2 with a microphone, um, but find that the internal mic works well as well. Yeah, it's brought a case that attaches to a tripod and can edit and upload directly from the iPad 2, um, and um, Serge is just saying, any advice on improving sound recording using Kodak ZI8? Uh, if you want to improve the sound, Serge, then what you would do is open iMovie um, on your... Oh, well, that's only if you've got a Mac. You would need w Windows Movie Maker or whatever. What, what I tend to do when I want to improve the sound, because the, the reason that you have got an issue with sound using an external mic on a Kodak ZI8... This is going to get technical, sorry, guys. But the reason is because the sound on an external mic using those microphones will probably be mono, yeah, which means it'll only come out of one headphone ear. It only comes out of one... What's the, what's the technical term for that? One, one whatever. <laughs> um, and stereo means that it comes out of both <laughs> headphone ears. You love my technical description. That's the me? technical term, yes. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, so what I tend to do is I use iMovie because I'm on a Mac, but I'll get my video and I will put the video into iMovie and I will export the uh, sound. So I'll detach the audio and then I'll export the sound, okay, so that the sound is just a uh, file on my desktop. And then I will put that into a sound package called Audacity. Okay, Audacity, A-U-D-A-C-I-T-Y, Audacity. And then I've got a little way of how I then split the track and turn it from mono to stereo. In fact, I'm going to write that down as a video. Right, Heidi, see what I did there? Heidi, <laughs> see what I did there? I just got some content there because Serge wants to know how to improve the sound. I know how to improve the sound. So now I'm going to record a video on how to split tracks in Audacity and turn a mono track into a stereo track. And that leads to, you can also show in Audacity how to do the search and replace for background noise. You oh, can yeah. Get rid of it. That'd be another good content piece for you. I've never found that. It, when I've tried to use that, though, it, makes you, it can make your voice sound very robotic. Oh, really? Huh. Yeah, I need to play with that a bit more, to be honest with you. Um, but anyway, 
video on how to split tracks in Audacity. So yeah, so there you go. There's there's some more content for me to stick on my blog. Happy days. Anyway, we've run massively over. Okay, we've run 20 minutes over. We're really trying to keep these to an hour if we can. But we've just got so much to talk about, haven't we, Jay? <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, thanks guys. Anybody got anything else that they want to say just before we go? Unfortunately, um, there's a bit of a delay on the old comments. So, uh, um, Joe, will you post this in SNA? Um, uh, no, actually, no. It's not going into the SNA site. It's just on the YouTube channel, Surge, the replays, and I will be sending it out as a, um, in the email. Yeah, just to let people know where they can go and see it. But if you just uh, go to my YouTube channel, which is the SNA TV, um, then all of the, 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 they're on there. But they're also on our Facebook page, aren't they? Our Marketing Mayhem Facebook page. Let me just go and get you the link for that. Um, and if you just go to the same YouTube, you, that long YouTube URL that you went, you know, that you came to to see the live version, it'll, the replay will be there as well. Yeah. So all of the, all of the, um, it's not on this. It's not on that one. It's on the replays, isn't it, Neil? Uh, Neil, it's not. Neil might comment for me because mine's not working very fast because I'm on the Hangout. I think. Um, anyway, if you go to our Marketing Mayhem page, okay, all the replays. There's a previous are on there. episodes tab there. Yeah. yeah, but I'll I'll send that out. I'll send that out anyway. Um, all right, guys. We, we better we better go. We better uh, leave, leave you all to it. So have a fantastic day, whatever you're doing. Jay, have you got anything you want to leave the guys with? No, I think it was great. Just thanks for coming and for participating and commenting and let us know. You know, we're we're happy. Go over to the Marketing Mayhem uh, page and just let us know on Facebook what you'd like to see, what other topics we've got a bunch planned that we think are going to be good and helpful. But we're always eager to hear what what we can do to help so let us know absolutely yeah we really do want to know what you guys would want to know <laughs> the more we know what you know the more we can provide what you want <laughs> all right guys thanks ever so much for for tuning in today and uh, we'll see you next week same time and uh, in the meantime we'll see you on the page in the group and around and about take care have a great day yeah bye-bye